right, welcome back. Yes, indeed, uh, continuing uh, the program, we've got uh, Senator Gabriel Suswam here with us. He is a former governor of Benue State. He's also been a senator, member of the House of Reps. Good morning, and thank you for coming on today. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Talking about your party, and several questions about your party's role as an opposition. Many seem to think they expected perhaps a lot more a lot more presence, a lot more from the party. Do you share the same view? Do you think that at least at the moment, the party is living up to that billing as the opposition party? No, of course not. Of course not. Definitely not. Uh, let me give you a brief history of um, uh, uh, the situation in, in PDP, which I'm a member. Uh, immediately after the presidential primaries, which uh, large article one, um, uh, some words of attrition begin to um, appear and exist within the party. And uh, uh, it wasn't properly handled. Um, so it degenerated, degenerated, where you have a group of five governors who opted out and felt that uh, short change and uh, decided that they were not going to, they will remain in PDP, uh, but not going to, uh, work for the PDP. Ordinary. Uh, in any organizations, the regulations that regulate the organizations, uh, PDP has a constitution which has measures. Uh, uh, six, section 58 of the party uh, clearly encapsulates the um, activities of individuals within this party that will constitute a breach on the party. Why uh, Section 57 of the same constitution provide for punishment, for sanctions, a disciplinary committee that will follow a certain procedure. When a group of persons decided that they will remain in an organization which has a regulation, clearly said they would not work for the organization and nothing was done. Of course, other people got emboldened and also took the same part. And so since that time, PDP has been substantially weakened we came to a level that we cannot provide an effective opposition, as it were. Now, are you, uh, who was the chairman, because of this um, crisis within the party, uh, was um, um, uh, taken aside by the court, yeah. and um, as they said, he's uh, suspended, so to speak. And then the deputy chairman from the north which is also provided in the constitution where you know, the chairman, for whatever reason, is unable to act or resigns. Mm -hmm. The deputy chairman says, impending when he will be replaced uh, from where the chairman came from. Now, the deputy chairman has been acting, and uh, since then, the party has become highly ineffective. So is it that the deputy chairman party. couldn't take those kind of decision, decisions with the support it's, of the it, party? It, from, from more indication, that is what is on the table, that uh, the deputy chairman, uh, who is leading our party now, you, you might trust you to know that we've not had NEC for almost a year. Yeah. NEC is supposed to be held periodically for almost a year. There's no NEC of the party. NEC is the highest organ uh, next to convention where party decisions are taken. The terms of ward chairman and ward escorts and local government, most state majority of the state, has expired. It's only NEC that can approve the guidelines. That has not been done. So it means that you have people who are occupying position illegally. If we were to hold any election now, we will not have people at those levels to sign forms because the illegal occupants of this office. And there is no reason given by the leadership of our party as to why Congresses in those states cannot be heard. Mm -hmm. That shows a highly ineffective leadership. And with an effective leader, ineffective leadership, there's no way we can provide that uh, supposedly uh, effective opposition. Uh, is it that now. the deputy chairman doesn't know what to do, uh, the acting chairman, is it that he doesn't know what to do, or is he you know, unwilling to do it, or has it been teleguided from other quarters? I think there are uh -huh. some, some subterranean forces uh, that are interfering uh, in the running of the party. Uh, it does appear to me, this is my personal opinion, uh, that uh, the leadership of our party is acquiescing to that. And so that, those subterranean forces are the ones determining what happened in our party. 
And uh, why won't we hold neck? We give our guidelines for conduct of Congresses in state that, that t- tenants of, of, of war chairman and local government have expired. Uh, have so, you been able to, you know, raise that up at any level? I'm sure no, you, there you is are no, no there ordinary is no, member of the party. There's no forum for us to do that, except uh, on, 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 on platforms such as this one. There's no forum. You know, when you go for neck, you can express how you feel and what you think should be done that has not been done. There's no such forum. They're not creating that forum. They're not not, ready not even the little neck. meetings that they call. I mean, uh, they, there was a meeting yesterday. No, those are the so-called National Working Committee meeting. But yesterday, I learned that uh, the uh, National Organizing Secretary met with the, uh, with the state party chairman across the country. That mm-hmm. is not a meeting uh, for any other person to attend. So, uh, BOT was heard recently, but that BOT was just to ratify uh, the term of uh, Senator Wagwara and, of course, appoint uh, uh, Governor McAfee as the sure. Secretary of BOT. And one was expecting that after yeah. the BOT, uh, there will be a series of actions uh, that will follow, but that it's not yeah, but be. you are no ordinary member of the PDP. Yeah. Are you underrating the the power of one to be able to make a difference in this case if things are going wrong? Yeah, they say that a tree cannot make a forest, and, and, and I believe in that. But um, I know that there are a lot of people like me who are very concerned uh, about the situation uh, in the PDP. And uh, we are beginning to talk among ourselves. For instance... The North Central feel very strongly uh, that the position of national uh, national chairman, as provided in the Constitution, mm-hmm. under Section 47, sub 6, that that position should come back to the North Central to provide uh, a replacement for, for IU. And we've been consulting at that. Uh, there is ongoing consultation. Uh, even today, as I talk, I think the Zona Party Working Committee a meeting with the plateau governor, who, by that position, has effectively become the leader of the PDP within the North Central. And I think once the North Central take a position as to who replaces IU, I believe that uh, we'll get the party mm-hmm. going. Because the party needs a focused leadership at this time. That is what is lacking. Well, you are also trying to become the chairman of the party. Of course, yes. So why should they look your way? Because, I mean, if you look at the North Central... Uh, Benue say particularly, yeah. but three. Why should they still be Benue? No, we, we are not saying that it must necessarily be Benue, but it should be from the North Central. When this situation uh, happened uh, before, you know, uh, Bamanga Tuku was the chairman of the party. Yeah. When he was eased out, Alaji Mwazu, former governor of Bauchi, became the chairman. When Mwazu was eased out, of course, it became protracted, just like it's been now. And may his soul rest in peace, Elijah Gulag went to court. That was how Modu Sharif became the chairman of the party. Three of them consecutively in the Northeast. Why should there be an exception where the North Central is concerned? And so I'm not saying that it must be me, but we have very high profile men of integrity within the North Central. If it is former governor, we have a retinue of former governor. If it is former Senate president, we have a couple of them. So any one of these people can be national chairman. But let us have the party going. The party is comatose now. And there's nothing that can happen except there's some uh, change in that leadership. And well, they, 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 by right, yeah. encapsulated in the constitution of, of PDP, the North Central is entitled so if it to goes complete to, the tenure of IU. If it gets to the North Central... Yeah. Don't you think that perhaps Niger and Nasarawa State will have a lot more chance than... No, I, we have no problem with that. Okay, what I'm saying... Whichever way, wherever what, what I'm What I'm saying central. is that, that is what I'm saying. If we go to Niger State, you have former Governor uh, Mwazu, who is eminently qualified to be the national chairman of this party. If we go to Kogi, you have two former governors there, and, and some military governors. If we come to Nasarawa... You also have a retinue of high-profile people within the PDP who can take this position. You go to Plateau, it's the same thing. So I'm not saying that it must be in Benway, but I've stepped forward. Any of those persons from this state who step forward, if the North Central at the point of meeting decide that 
of all the people who have expressed their interest, this is the person that we want. So be it. We will support that. But let us not be shortchanged just because we seem to be docile at this movement. Where are these forces coming from? The forces you say are subterranean. Is it within the party or external? Well, when you have subterranean forces, that, that, that suggests that they are external. There are some people who are controlling the party from outside. Uh, they are subterranean. We don't know them. But we know that there are subterranean forces trying to suppress the party and, of course, uh, keep the party uh, in comatose state. Mm. You've talked about a lack of discipline as what has now led the party to where it, was, where it currently is. Uh, but we saw, you know, just how things degenerated, um, how initially the party refused to take a decision on zoning in line with its own constitution, how that led, I mean, it threw the ticket open and how that led to uh, what we saw at the, uh, is it the convention now, the, the primaries of the party, mm -hmm. and, you know, eventually the fallout uh, of that particular uh, primary convention. And before you knew what was happening, you know, there were calls for, okay, if it has now gone the way it has gone, with this being, uh, you know, zoned to the north, then let the chairman be from the south. Those agitations were on for a very long time yeah. before the five governors uh, who said they were not going to work for the party, you know, turned their backs on the party. In all of that time, you know, how would you rate the party's attempt at reconciliation um, in, the t in those times That's, and even afterwards? i have say that, that the situation was not well handled. It wasn't well handled. There were not concerted efforts on the part of the leadership of the party to reconcile the, the, those divergence interests that you've mentioned. Uh, once that was not done, some people just felt that they were not included in what was going on. People felt that they were excluding them. And so they decided that, well, if they're excluding me in here, let me seek for alternative. But what is bad about that is that you cannot belong to an organization that has regulation that regulate that organization, which you subscribe to, and then turn back to say that you will remain in that organization and work against that organization, and there are no sanctions. That doesn't happen anywhere. It's good about the five governors. Yeah, that does, it's not just the five governors. There are other uh, 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 very high-profile stakeholders within the PDP who behave in the same manner. That doesn't happen anywhere. A serious organization we apply sanctions. Could the party... and, 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 and like I said, this party in Section 57, we talk about disciplinary committee across board, across the length and breadth of the party. And then Section 58, we provide activities that constitute breach against the party. It's, they are clearly spread out. And why can't the, nation, the leadership of the party apply those? Do you think, could the party have afforded to sanction them at the time? This is what, you know, you, you know the question that she asked for us. First, there are internal mechanisms within the party to address some of these issues. It is when those mechanisms fail, there were no attempt to apply those mechanisms. And so at that time, uh, one would have felt, uh, most of us thought and were suggesting that, let these people be properly reconciled. What are the issues? You know, we have had this before during Jonathan's time, that also cost us the election. And we thought that we should only have learned uh, from the mistake we made. Then, even then, it was six or five governors, the same five governors mm. who opted out. Seven of uh, them, I think. Seven, but mm. some of them stepped back, uh, you know, who opted out, and we lost that election. So in, 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 in an election that um, has uh, 36 states, you have five governors within your party who opt out. That should be something that should be taken seriously. The party was unable to reconcile those interests. We lost the election. But then moving forward, if any person feels that, well, I can't work for this organization, why well, belong to it? So why for you, I mean, if you, I mean, since you've already put yourself out there, discipline is going to be paramount to you. The first priority, because in any society, even within a nucleus of, of the society, which is the family. If there's no discipline in the family, it means that the family will be scattered. Doesn't no. that already put you at a disadvantage? How? If you say that, I mean, that discipline is what is lacking, 
um, and, and, and that, you know, I don't know what measures you would have proposed that the party apply. But from you saying that, you know, people cannot remain within the party and be working for another no, party. No, of course of, not. Of course uh, not. You know, it, uh, it, it would seem that it already means that you think they should be expelled from the party. No. You see, that, that, like I say, Section 58 of the Constitution of PDP clearly spelled out the procedure. You don't just walk up and expel any person or suspend any person. You must follow that procedure. It's provided in Section 58. And once you apply that, the doctrine of, of fair hearing will be given to people who uh, the party feels that they are working against the party. And once the doctrine of fair hearing is applied in addressing some of these issues, of course, people will see that there's transparency in what is it. So you can't just walk up the people who are working against the party have things that have worried them. Are those things substantial enough for them to take those actions? Yes or no? That will be left for the disciplinary committee to decide. And so it's not just going to be arbitrariness in what I would do as chairman. There's not going to be arbitrariness. There will be fair hearing given to everybody. But then we'll give leadership. Once there's leadership, like I said, even in the family, if the head of the family does not give leadership, of course, you don't have a family. The leadership in PDP is either incapacitated by whatever mm. the reasons but, are. Do, do and you those have... who have no focused, disciplined leadership that will focus this party and provide, um, uh, like, like, like he said, um, the opposition that Nigerians are looking for, or a viable alternative. You know, Nigeria, with what is happening in, 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 in the uh, government in power, we need a viable alternative. PDP should have been providing that. But what is happening in PDP? PDP is not a viable alternative. People are looking for other alternatives. And that is why there are all kinds of meetings going on. If PDP was focused, most of the people who are holding meetings with smaller parties will be looking towards PDP. But that leadership is not there. And until we provide that leadership, PDP is not a viable alternative for anybody. Let's bring Ayo. Well, thank you, Chamberlain. You know, Senator, I, I, I caught something that you said in response to one of Malquest's questions the other time. You said that there's some kind of mechanism ought to have kicked in, uh, conflict resolution mechanism of the, the party. So the question I'd like to ask you is, is it a mechanism that should kick in automatically or it sh it's something that needs, to be, that needs to be activated? If it is to be activated, by whom? Now, that is what I said. If you have a focused leadership that knows what he's doing, of course, that will be activated. You, you, the PDP has an acting chairman. The constitution of the party provides for everything that regulates the party. And he knows exactly what to activate. If there is a conflict within the party or a crisis situation that needs to be addressed internally, first, you take those steps. Those people are agitating. Uh, if you have five governors who are not happy within the party and you think that it's not a problem, then you must be joking. Those internal mechanisms were not activated by the leadership of the party. And so it has delayed and delayed and we are where we are today. Now, where do we go from here? Yeah, that is the that's question. The question. Okay. Well, Senator, one other thing about that, you know, there are those who would point to pockets of issues in various parts of the country, especially as it concerns the PDP. Um, the, your governorship candidate in Lagos, for instance, has also repeatedly called out the leaders in his party in Lagos. And uh, he said that some of them are not they're, they're not committed to the party, and that every election cycle they support other, poli other candidates of the party other than the candidate of the PDP. And as far as he's concerned, they need to either leave or that the party should expel them. These issues you're mentioning at the, at the national level could be a product of this kind of e issue happening in Lagos as well as in other parts of the country. So what then, as you that said, where exactly do we go from here? Saying. Okay, no, so no. how do we address these pockets of issues holistically or individually? Now, first and foremost, um, as the national chairman of the party, this is the way I will handle it. I will first go to Lagos, sit down with the stakeholders in Lagos, 
and seek to appreciate what the issues are. Once there is that level of appreciation at the level of leadership, you will know what measure to apply. Are they substantial enough for you to activate the disciplinary committee to address it? Or are they to form a committee for reconciliation? These are the two ways that this can be addressed. Uh, ditto for other parts of the country. Most time, when a party wins election or loses election, there's uh, a, a, a reconciliation committee that is set up to go and reconcile interests. There are definitely going to be uh, people who will not feel right about uh, what has happened or what took place. And once you fail to reconcile, if there are disparate measures, they must be taken. Where you don't discipline or apply discipline in any organization, like I've said, that organization is bound to fail. And PDP is at the precipice now because uh, reconciliation is not properly taking place. And so people are not feeling that uh, they're important or they're not seeing their importance. Discipline is not applied. And so where we are now, we need an overhaul of, 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 of the leadership of the party. That is the truth. There is no pretense about it. Every person in PDP knows it. And so we must address the issue of leadership of the party. And but, but as a leader of the party where we are now, mm -hmm. if we don't take this to our approach, reconciliation mm -hmm. and discipline, then of course uh, the party goes nowhere. The question then would be, Senator, how far deep does this go? We know how strong, or rather, how potent the word of any politician is. Do you think these issues go that deep, or there are things that are just going, uh, just happening from the top, just the periphery, and that it doesn't? How how impactful is it at the grassroots level in the in the various wards that every politician uh, operates from? <clears throat> Well, let me say that uh, when this current administration came in place, there were a lot of hopes and people feel that a lot will happen. So um, the fear was that you have massive decampment of people from not just PDP, from other parties. But the administration is performing woefully so far. There's nothing that is going on. All the policies that have been taken have been anti-people. So PDP is very much intact at the grassroots level. It just needs a leadership that can activate activities that can give these people a sense of inclusiveness in what is going on. That is not happening. And so every person is, has adopted the, uh, let me quote uh, the lead baller again, the attitude of let's sit down look. That is what is happening. I've had meetings in the last uh, few weeks back home, and I was pleasantly surprised at the level of people that attended that meeting and how many there were. That's to show me that, yes, people are waiting for some activities to be activated within the party. PDP well, is still very intact. It just yeah, needs um, a, a purposeful and uh, focused leadership. That's all that we need. And you will see that they will begin to provide that alternative that Nigerians are looking for. Nigerians voted this party looking for a change. They said they were tired of PDP. Unfortunately, it looks like they moved from frying pan to fire. That is where we are now. Well, perhaps that also raises another that, question, uh, Senator. If wants to... Yeah, my apologies. Perhaps you know yeah. that also raises the question of the difference uh, between the PDP and any other party at that. So there are many Nigerians yeah. believe that look, there is no difference between uh, the PDP and the APC. As far as some are concerned, there is only the difference. Go the difference goes only as far as. The difference within is six and half a dozen. What differentiates, in your opinion, the PDP uh, from the uh, APC uh, or any other party like that? I would disagree with you. When, when, I, I don't think that Nigerians have known better now uh, because uh, they say, there's this saying that until you marry a second wife, you won't know how good the first one was. Uh, it was PDP that was in power for 16 years. There was this mantra of change that was introduced. And uh, whether <laughs> we've changed to the positive or the negative, Nigerians on the street will tell you. Now, a bag of rice during PDP time was in the neighborhood of 15,000. It's about 75,000 now. Look at just a crate of egg now, whether an average Nigerian on the street can even eat one egg because of the cost. Now, that is the difference. Economic policies 
that were in place during PDP time were far better. They were friendly to the people. The economic policies now are completely anti people. How do you, in, this, in, the, in one fair swap, remove fuel subsidy, enhance the interest rate in the bank, and also flow the Naira? How do you do that? All of these are anti people. You can't go to the market. Every day you go to the market, if today um, a packet of sugar is 10 Naira, in the evening you go to the market, it will be 15 Naira. So there's no way that you can plan. In any society where there is no planning, how do even a family uh, at home work? Somebody who collects 300,000 a month, you now say it's okay, I've been having food for 100,000. Then you go to the market, that food is about 350,000. We are above the, the money that you collect. How do these people exist? So how can you, there's a clear difference between what PDP uh, was doing and what this government is doing. This shows clearly that you have a government in place that is anti-people, that has no direction, that does not know how to uh, run the, the, the economy of this country. And so a clear difference from Obasanjo to Yaradua to President Jonathan. Nigerians didn't go under the hardship that they are going through now. Uh, I've listened to some very basic and baseless argument that this was put in place, it was PDP. You said you promised change. You promised change. If government was that one person can complete it, of course there will be no need for uh, other people to say that want to run government. But because government is a, is, is, is a continuum, mm. if you come into government and promise that you will change to the, in the, uh, to the positive, yeah. and what we are experiencing is uh, palpable suffering uh, in, in, the, in the country, then of course uh, you don't know what you are doing. So there's a clear difference between the policies of PDP in, in, in government and the bad policies of this current government. Senator, just before you go, maybe in about a minute, could you tell us, I know that uh, I think sometime in September 2010, the Tortiva at that time, Dr. Alfred, tried to reconcile yourself and your predecessor, the SGF. Till date now, it's still a thing. What's going on? What's the rift between both of you? No, we're just in different parties. Ah, uh, this is not just about uh, different uh, we're parties. Just, we're just in different parties. And uh, I don't think there's anything. He's in APC, I'm in PDP. Uh, I don't think there's any issue. You've never That seen. meeting lasted almost the whole day. No. You turned people but from you your side and they trying to reconcile you've never both. Seen us, you've never seen us insult ourselves in public. I like to say that uh, in spite of the fact that where different parties were matured about it, uh, we're not going out there to uh, divide the state along uh, the SGF or any other person. SGF uh, was, uh, after a long military interregnum in, in the polity, was the first governor that came in 1999. So by that, all of us have come after him. And uh, all of us had worked under him. And so we are more like um, the protégés of the SGF. And so if we have political differences, that is not to say that uh, it has gone to a level where we kill ourselves. We're not killing ourselves. Yes, we have our All differences, right. but uh, we still maintain some level of respect uh, to him as a person. He's older than us. Uh, he was the first governor after a long military uh, intervention. And we came under him, under his tutelage. And so, uh, political differences, yes, but... Uh, so it's all politics? <laughs> well, okay, yeah, well. To, some, to, to some level, yes. All right, we'll leave it at that. Uh, Senator uh, Suswam is gunning for the position of the PDP chairman. Thank you for coming on and all the best to you. I appreciate it. All right, that is the show today. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. I was I'm Chamberlain Nassau. I was going to say, if anyone wants to be governor of Benue, maybe they should try and make sure their first name is G. You know, George, Gabriel. I was almost confused. Which G am I going to use now? Let oh, me thank see. You. <laughs> thank you for watching this morning. I'm Mao Kwehel <laughs> Maybe you want to try, Chamberlain, maybe you want to try gambling. Maybe that will help, but I don't think so. Amaya Makide, have a wonderful day.